Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, the first video on the John Deere 318 did quite well, so I'm going to continue filming its resurrection, uh, bringing it back to life. Seems people have a, a decent interest in it. So, on the last video, we left off with, we got it from Dan's house, and again, thank you very much, Dan. Got it running, found some electrical issues with it, got into the carb, cleaned that out, found water in the fuel, and I forget what else that we got into. Maybe answer a couple of questions. One was the hour meter. People were saying that that is a non-correct hour meter for a John Deere. So those hours may not mean anything. Again, I ordered a new seat for it. There it is right there. And I forgot when I was cleaning out my truck that Dan gave me a bunch of manuals for it too. So we actually have some uh, reference to go by on this. A couple things I want to continue to address. The engine was very tappy and it does have adjustable valves so we can get into fixing that i also want to clean it up and do some painting of things too so the seat's got to come off to get a new one put on i guess we'll get that tin off of there and get that cleaned up masked off and we'll get some paint on that along with the tin that's on the nose let me get set up and we'll get into it the battle plan is to get that seat out of there and get some pieces painted and while that paint is drying we can get into maybe some of the other repairs what do you think the chances are it's not going to break loose for us. Not very good if the wrench is going the wrong way. That feels like something. I don't want to snap. Go spray some juice on them. I got them sprayed up. Let's go see if the wing nuts will move. I have a feeling everything's going to be about the same scenario. I have those soaking. I'm pretty sure that they're going to go right down into a frame down below, but just in the off case that they're just bolted into the tin. Let's try getting the rest of the bolts out of, of the pan and see if it comes up with the seat. Then we can get to the bottom of it and get some spray on the bottom now. Yeah, the problem with filming is that when you, when you try to film, it takes about three times as long to get the same amount of work covered as not. I'm not complaining, I just, I would rather film on stuff that people are interested in watching. So, we let this one sit for a week. How many more do we got? Yeah, it's not bolted to it. Nice. Let's see. We got one more in the front, I think, and then maybe the whole thing will come off. Let's see if that'll lift right out of there. Gives a good chance to clean stuff up too. Back by the screens. Probably give it another bath too. Pretty dirty. Like a critter nest was here. Two lines like we talked about on the first video. One's reserve, one is going to be the main fuel. One of those was disconnected. Here's the valve for making it roll. And I also talked about it in the first one. It pushes little plungers down. And you can see by how grungy they are. And that wasn't going to move for us. Let's, the gas tank's not connected anyway for a fuel source. Let's see if we can get that out of the way. Here's a bypass for the mower deck seat. These are the lights for the rear tail lights. That just sitting in there. Yeah. Let's get the fuel lines off of it.
Let's get those lines off of there. Without breaking anything. Sometimes if they fight me too much, I'll just cut. This looks like it's a brass. Need something to hold that a little bit better. Come on. Come to daddy. Come on. These wires. We'll threaten to wear a pair of wire cutters. Building. Want to come apart? Cut it off. These is not plastic fittings. They suck. And kind of torque on it a little bit, you know. Now we're in. The threat worked. Let's see if we can get that gas tank out of there. That's where the PTO would come out, back to the rear. This is transmission uh, fluid level, a little sight window. A hydraulic cylinder. I want to say there is a pin that you put in it if you are not using it and you're using the front. I don't quite remember on that because the lift and lowers the mower deck but it's on the same control as the two valves for the front. So I think you lock this if you're not gonna use it. Like I had a, a location to put a pin in it. I don't wanna seem to remember. Somewhere in the linkage. I will find that later. I don't know if I wanna give it a bath right now or do we want to adjust the valves first? We still have, it should still run. Might be a little uncomfortable to sit on, but it's still run. Uh, yeah, because it'll be cold right now. You kind of want to adjust them cold. Let's do that, because if I fire it over there and drive it, and we'll have to wait for it to, to cool back off. So we need to get the muffler off of it and the intake manifold, because down here in these plates is where the adjustment is for the valves. Let's go work on that. We're probably going to leave this alone and we'll just see if we can get the bolts out of the, the cylinder head. Hopefully they come out without uh, putting up too much of a fight. Let's start with the exhaust. Let's see if they crack these for us, hopefully. They don't go with that bendy boo kind of feel. That one will go. That one will go. Kind of loose. Like that. It's like a job for power tools. that choke cable out of our way. It's got to come off anyway. Mm. Already got the bolts out of there. Is there anything holding the front? Yes, there is. This plate's got to get unbolted. Of course it's behind the clutch. Of course it is. Why would you not do that? <laughs> what a dumb design that was. Check it out. So it's got a plate welded to the muffler and the bolts are back here and the bolts are behind the clutch. Why? Why would you do that? <sighs> I don't want to break it here. Let me think about it for a minute. Yeah, it's got a couple of Allen heads right there. 
So I'm going to try to take the clutch off without uh, taking the adjustments. There's adjustments for the clutch, the preload. There'll be like an air gap in between there. We'll probably have to go set that up anyway, but we're going to go for one for the center, four around the outside. See, hopefully the whole thing will slide off that shaft without giving us too much of a fight. If it does, we may uh, alter what we're doing here. The main goal is just to adjust the valves, not rebuild the engine, you know? Some guys are commenting about using, not using impact sockets on with the impact gun. Probably impact sockets is the walls of them sometimes are so thick you just can't get around. Like you see how close this one is here. Not that I can't put a wrench on it, but wrong way. Remember that ground wire went up there, okay? Think it's gonna slide off? You think it's gonna fight us? I think it's gonna fight us. I say that. Hold on. Stay still. I say that so that I'm doing reverse psychology so it'll fall right off for us. There goes the compressor. That doesn't look too rusty. Come on, baby. do see what happens a little bit of a prying hey I got pry bars let's go see that a little forward for us we need to do more good oh yeah hopefully it clears this with the next painy ass thing right We're in, except for the hot wire. Let's go figure it out. Actually, we could probably just leave that alone. I have to remove it. Now we can get to those two bolts. I hope you guys could see. And now we can get those two out of there. Pop the key out of the crankshaft so we don't go go losing that. Let's go see if... Well, that was... underwhelmingly loose too. I bet you that is not going to come off. God, I guess that was going to happen. Alright, that's a little detour. Let's see. What else decides to go and fight us, right? Yeah. We is in. And there's a little bit of debris hanging right by the exhaust valve. I'm gonna try to get that out of the way. It's actually a that was a rock. <laughs> that would be good for it. At least it's on the exhaust side. Let's get that gasket out of there. And now we have the intake. We need to get rid of the throttle clip. I'm gonna put that right back on the rod again. And four bolts. Should be able to get the intake off. You also inspect that intake too. We talked about in the first video, they sometimes are a suspect for intake leaks. I don't think I need the extension. Those out of there, we'll get that. Hope that oil fill we can rotate the clamp for the pillar neck. There we go. And this should just pop up out of our way. We'll take the portable fuel tank right with it. And we're in. Kind of. We'll say a little hunk of carbon fell down the intake isn't going to be very good for things. Get the gaskets out of there. 
the other ones are stuck on the ground floor. I'm going to take some paper towels, shove them in here, take an air gun, and we'll blow some of this crap out of here so that uh, we're not dealing with a bunch of, bunch of crap. Let's see how this uh, shaky overhead camera setup works for us. Let me give you a better view. Pick out the, the mouse turds that are all packed in it. And when you open it up, or not. Watch your eyes. Noise alert, too. Yeah, so you can get that, get that out of the way. I don't know if that's factory or not. Whatever, it's kicking up some oil. Let's get valve covers off. So, lifter covers. Crud. that on. It looks like it's got a little check valve and some, some crap in there. You should be able to pop that whole thing up. Let's do the same with the other one. hardware in there. Gasket on that one broke. Alright, so you want to be, I took the plugs out of it too. Let's go. I think we'll be safe. Rotate it. Pretty sure where top dead center is going to be. We can stick a screwdriver in it if we have to. But I think generally on flatheads, on flatheads, on opposing, when two valves are, are overlapping on this side and moving, that makes it so the other side is as adjustment point. So we're going to go with that. It is 5 thou for the intake and 13 for the exhaust. Let me go grab some fuel gauges. That one. That one is loose. That one is just doing its own thing. <laughs> That's a self-adjusting on, on that one. That could be an issue. It's probably our tap right there. I'm not quite sure. I thought they were supposed to have their own built-in drag. I thought the lifter was supposed to have its own. Well, you got to put a wrench on it. You know what I mean? And have drag when it turns. That does not seem to be the case on that one. I could adjust that one with my fingers. So, right. I'm going to take a, uh, a blade, get this gasket out of here the best we can, and grab ourselves some feeler gauges, see if we can go figure out what's happening. Alright. 
exhaust actually feels pretty good uh, a little on the loose side and this guy is just that one's just doing whatever it wants to it does seem like I wonder if it has a worn lobe or a worn cam. And the reason why I'm saying that is if you look at, let me adjust that to roughly where it's going to be decent. Five minutes, five. So at five thou, right? right there see how many threads are hanging out and if i look at the intake on the other side it, it's comparable to the exhaust one so something i think is happening inside there i don't know if i'm going to go tear into any of that we just may set it and see what happens over time the valve looks like it's the same height as the other valve i don't see it and usually it kind of would go the other way that as the valve the head of the valve is over here so as the valve is closing all the time usually the seat wears in and the, and the valve actually gets tighter more than looser on the cylinder head side of it on the on the camshaft side of things when they wear down you, you kind of see what you're getting now so that's what i'm afraid of either the lifter is kind of going kapui or the uh cam is kapui they're different lobes too so it's kind of hard if it was the same sometimes the, they use the same cam and it just kind of works both sides of the motor the uh i, I have a feeling it, it's probably going to be this lobe what we'll do is we're probably going to go loosen it up i don't know if i can get a drop of loctite on there to hold it and we're going to adjust the other valves and what we can do is we'll spin the motor over and we'll watch it and we'll see how much stroke that we get on the valve that that might zero us in what do you think if the valve has a normal stroke then the lobe didn't get burned off the cam and i would say more that maybe it's more the lifter is uh grinding away hard to say all right i found it and it's good news I just didn't notice it. How many of you noticed it? Pause it right now and write your comment. What what looks different on this one compared to the other ones? In fact, valve cap backed off and came off the valves. That's what was taking up the difference in the height, I believe. Funny part is I'm looking over at this one. And I do not see it. I don't see it on that one though either. The other intake valve. All right. Well, I am going to go spin that puppy all the way in. It probably just loosened up so much that it was able to walk out of there. Hopefully this light is not bleaching out the camera. Let's see if we can get that. Back on. Uh, we're gonna have to do some some creative valve pushing. Let's go see if we can get a screwdriver down in there. That should do it. Hold the valve open for us. And see if we can get that cap. Now what's weird is the one is missing from the other side too. That one's missing. And because that one's the breather, it has a much larger hole. Let's get that in there. Mm -hmm. Now 
let's try to adjust that out. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way from the camera and my fat head. Right. Let's see if that looks a little bit more normal. Is it called a lash cap? I think so. So that's the issue with that. So we don't have any more components. That's good. The other problem is, I don't know if you guys can see it. Kick you over that way. So, yeah, I'll pop you out of this thing. Hold on, override. So, this one has a much larger port going back down to the block. And if that one fell off, that one fell down inside there. Where this one just has the small one, because this one, the other one has the breather, this one doesn't. So that one was able to stay put. The other thing is, why did it do that? Did it overheat real bad one time? And it, yeah, look at it. The, there's the gap on that one. So that one did the same thing. That's why that motor was so clanky. We need to go find that. That is gonna suck. Well, I guess we can. How we start with draining the oil? There's the drain plug on this. Sometimes you have a tube that goes out to the side. Actually, we won't get the fill right out of our way. a good idea wasn't it i'm gonna go put you in the stand get an oil pan underneath here we want to drain that oil anyway and let's go see if we can find that sucker yeah it definitely has one of those funky drain plugs unfortunately let's go pop this out some place to go and we are going to go try taking a magnet and go fishing through the drain hole possibly be able to catch that thing hopefully it's magnetic <laughs> I'm not giving this the whole world of hope, but if it's sitting down there, if it was able to make it all the way down there. I have a camera you could stick in there. We got to drain the oil yet. We got a camera we could drain it. Stick in there and uh, I would think it would probably go to the back of the motor, wouldn't you? Got a bunch of crud. Got a bunch of metal sludge sticking to it. I would think that hole would be right open to the crankcase up in the, the lifter board where we're looking. I wish I had one of the ones that had that little flex. You could probably make one. I don't think I can make the turn, you know? I, it can only allow me to go. Get these out of the way. Come to me. Yeah, where the drain plug is, there's not the, uh, you will have to pull the engine to get it. Because it's got like a, a valve. This motor sits tucked down in a frame. We have to do what we need to do. I'm not that concerned about the part flapping around and doing damage. I think kind of goes to one place and sticks where it should, you know, it'll kind of get gooed into a corner. Uh, I don't know. Maybe let's go drain it and maybe get a little more powerful magnet. We'll keep whittling. This is what we got. There's the valve for the oil inside there. Goes through some plumbing and then out a tube down below. 
Let's go see if we can crack that loose. Ow! Bit me in the knuckle. Let's go crack that thing all the way open. I doubt that it's going to be able to... I'm going to put you down and do what I need to do. Yeah, there's no... It's not a large enough opening for the cap to either fall out of that anyway. Other thing I'm thinking too, I wonder if it could have got sucked up in the oil filter. I don't know. I'm not sure what the passageway is. And I don't know. I would think it would have an oil pump. And if it's got an oil pump, it ain't, ain't going to make it through the oil pump, you know. Let's go pop the filter off anyway. Yeah, I would think it would be sitting in the bottom of the motor. Am I going the wrong way? Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. I need a good change in anyway. Is that just your clunk? I doubt we would get that lucky. Now we'll let that run down and drain out. And We'll go to the other side, either get stick a camera in there, or we'll start probing with the magnet a little bit more. Not sure if this is going to work for us, but what I was thinking is that oil flow seemed like it was really slow. And the end of the valve, you can actually take right off. I just was wondering if maybe the piece actually made it into the, the drain pipe. restricting the flow just a guess plus you might be able to get a, a magnet in there too for the straight shot in now yeah, I get you I think we got to go spin it out some more into a cowbell let's see if that whole assembly will come right out of there anything and it's time uh, I'm going to I don't think it could have made the turn do you no would have came out the drain plug then I think that's pretty we take that right off of there yeah let's probe that with a magnet a little bit What a surgeon feels like. <laughs> I think this little clip too. Get this man off of there. I don't know if we could flush it with something. I tried putting the camera down the other side. What happened was as soon as the camera touched anything, the camera itself got contaminated with oil. Nope. Well, I think for Shits and giggles. We shall take the end of that crankshaft cover right off. Hopefully we can get this off and get it to slide off and we could see into the crankcase around it. I tried looking for pictures. There's some. I, I think it does show more into it because you got to figure the crank, I believe, comes out this direction. So it would have to have room for the, the lobes to clear 
So let's do that. We'll give that a shot, see if we can get this plate off, see if this will all come off of here without fighting us too bad. I'm not quite sure. This is just another external plate. And then I'm going to pop these two out first. We'll get this off of here and then probably the inner one. I'm going to have enough snot to do it, but let's see. So we should probably hit that area with an air gun tube, blow some of that crap out of there. So it's not. Access to the camshaft right there or cap for the camshaft. And on that note, let's go crack them loose already. Let's go buzz them out. Explanatory which way it goes. Back on for the cam. What is going to be our best bet to get behind that? Let's go with two big pry bars. Let's go clean them off a little bit first. Looks like I can get behind it right here. Maybe right there. We can see, at least we can see inside it. Better shot than what we had before, right? All right. You ever get the feeling where we have this thing like totally disassembled in another hour? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get a light, go probe in there, and see what we can find. Let's see if we could turn that over so that the counterweight's out of our way. Should be able to turn. Some more access down below. That's pretty good. Let's see, it's time we go and go fishing with a magnet again. I don't see it. Plus, we could also probably probe it with them. Um, I would think it would be stuck under that oil strainer. I'm going to go poke and hope again. Alright, let's see if we can do this. So, the port that it fell into, right down there, ends up dumping into the top of the cam gear. Cam and crank gear, which is on the other side of the engine. And hopefully capture this. Let's see that, right? I'm going to point right to it with the end of the screwdriver. And... Hold on one second. I've got to dial the light down one click. There we go. I don't want to push it somewhere where I can't find it anymore. It is. Let's get it out of the way. We'll just look at it. Can you see that little shiny piece? I'm going to point the tip of the screwdriver right at it. It is below the tip. It is below the tip of the screwdriver. Right to the, it's to the left and lower of the screwdriver. That little metal thing right there. You touch it, it moves. <laughs> That's it. And now we got to hunt that thing out of there. I am going to try a magnet. Hopefully I have one long enough we can get back inside there and capture that. I don't know whether the cavities are back there for it to fall into. So we're going to go find out. It's a little more important that I can see than you can see. But let's go see how close we can get to it. 
I mean, the magnet wants to stick to everything else too on the way over. Please come out. Stuck to the gear. I have to put some tape around that linkage so it wants to stay straight. Come on. Get in there. Near it. I don't know if there's enough room for it to even come out of there though. Pick the tractor up from the back end and shake it. <laughs> and, well, I was gonna try and have it so that we can celebrate the, the glory of getting that out together. I'm gonna have to shut you down. Keep it to the side. I'm gonna make a little piece of wire with a hook on the end of it. Kind of like when I'm pulling somebody off the stage. Let's see. And I can move it. That's it, that's definitely it. I'm going to magnetize the tip of the screwdriver. It's just, it looks real close where there's going to be enough room between the gear, between the gear and the case for it to drop out of there. Right. I'm going to have to go get cozy with it. I got it kicked up to the side. Too bad. Let's try baby one again. It wouldn't fit out the bottom, but I got it to kick. Up to the side of the gear and the hole is facing at us. And I don't know what you guys can see. Unfortunately. I do not want to push it back down inside there again. Kids, it was a game called Operation. He said to remove it. Oh, you suck. You suck. He fell back down. I lost it. Oh, I don't see it no more. Uh. Problem is, there's not enough of a gap right here to get it out. I'm trying to flick it. It's behind though. This is the oil pickup. That's what's in the way here. I thought I was going to have a glory moment. Maybe not. I need to go back. I had a little thin piece of wire I was poking it around with. That was so close. Again, I'm going to pick the back of the tractor up and fling it at us. Shake it up and down. There's Brian when you need him. I might try to make something with a hook on it with one of those really high strength magnets. Watch the thing's not magnetic. <laughs> I'm chasing it for nothing. Alright. Alright. I can keep working at it. Well, I would love to say that I was able to finesse my way in there and get it out. But unfortunately, it went cling to an area I can't see. So I made the judgment call. Pulling the engine out. Stop screwing with it, because at some point 
the time you spend. Yeah. Probably gonna still end up pulling that oil pan off, but let me see if I can shake her loose a little bit. <laughs> well, if you would ask me, this is what I'd be doing today. I would have said no. All right, let's get into the belly of the beast. But you now even took that apart, I still won't be able to get it. <laughs> it is. Somewhere up in there. I don't know if I can turn the crank to get it. I'm gonna peek around and see if I can find it. Well, after much to do and wrestling and bolting the oil pump. Ha! Ha! <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> talk about putting up a fight. We're definitely not going to go lose that. Well, I am going to need an engine gasket set for this thing because I pretty much opened up almost every orifice other than the head gaskets on it and then the, the timing cover. So I'm going to go get that and I think we probably got enough on this video anyway. I mean, it just turned into a, there was no tools out when I started. <laughs> Just the way these things go, you know. But we got it. It is halfway there. <laughs> but we got it apart. I, I, it'd be a good time for me to clean things up anyway. It allows me access. We'll take this tin off. We can get to the starter wires easy. We can do a bunch of repairs in there and just really kind of clean everything up and paint things. You know, the, bank, the pan, the hood. And it'll probably take about uh, four or five days to grab an engine gasket set anyway. So I should be able to knock that stuff out in between. And maybe we, when we have that, we start reassembling the engine and, you know, uh, putting the machine back together again. I may or may not show all the uh, cleaning of it. Maybe we'll just, I'll fast forward through that part of it and uh, get stuff detailed up for the, uh, the final finish on this. All right, guys, while I'm rambling, I want to thank all you guys for hanging out with me and uh, doing some wrenching in the garage and uh, get my ass kicked <laughs> a little bit on this one. Well, until the next one, we'll see you later. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. And let's just go see if we can get the transmission to release itself. Move the crap off of them. Let's get some of the rust off. <laughs> the rat's <rattling. laughs> Those are basically dump valves with the hydraulic fluid. Should be able to push them down. A little bit of love.